In this week's COVID update from IHME, uh, we're looking at the surges around the world, particularly in North America, Latin America, and uh, most of Europe that are traced to the combination of uh, mobility levels being above pre-COVID levels, mask use globally down to 16% or less, uh, and of course the BA5 subvariant of Omicron. Now it is becoming increasingly challenging to make uh, complete sense of the COVID-19 surges in different countries as we see very different biases in different countries coming into reported cases, hospital admissions, and reported deaths. So for reported cases, uh, we're seeing very modest to no increase in some countries in Europe. Uh, as compared to hospitalizations, same in the United States. And we believe that's because of the widespread use of rapid antigen tests at home. And in most countries, people not reporting that to the public health authorities. They don't get into official case numbers. In contrast for hospital admissions, and you, you know, if you want an extreme example of this disconnect, look at Norway, where hospital admissions have gone up dramatically and yet cases have gone up only slightly. But for hospital admissions, most countries have required COVID testing for all patients, uh, at least most high income countries, meaning that you detect a quite substantial number of individuals that have COVID, but have gone to hospital for some other reason. And we tend to call these incidental COVID admissions. Now, the degree to which there'll be incidental COVID admissions depends on how much transmission there is broadly in the community. So we should expect under Omicron, the problem of incidental hospital admissions is dramatically larger than in a much more severe uh, variant such as Delta in the past, where there was less transmission in the community and those coming to hospital that were COVID positive were much more likely to be there simply uh, because of symptoms of COVID. So challenging interpretation, and if you want to have a contrast to Norway, look at Mexico, where the increase in reported cases is dramatically higher than the increase in hospital admissions. And we don't know if that's because the, there isn't the same testing requirement or universal testing for COVID for hospital admissions, or if there is less home use of tests. Either way, it's becoming quite a bit harder to make sense of the available data. Now, on the uh, should we be very concerned about BA5? Probably not. In the places that started earlier, uh, South Africa, Portugal, that had their BA5 uh, waves begin before other locations, we've seen from the beginning to the peak, it lasts about four to six weeks. So in many cases where uh, countries are three, four weeks into these surges, we do think that we will see, and the models tend to back up that observation, uh, we do expect to see peaks coming in the near future. Now, uh, meaning that there isn't perhaps a reason to be particularly alarmed about BA5, our long range models also suggest in the Northern hemisphere that we may, in, in the absence of a new variant that, that changes the whole story, we might expect to see a further winter or late fall Omicron wave start up again in October. And that would be a pattern that we saw uh, in 2020 and 2021. Now, whether that happens depends very much on this balance between waning immunity, waning immunity from, from prior vaccination, so whether or not people get a fourth booster in places where they have access to that, whether they want a fourth booster, versus waning immunity from uh, infection and the, the uh, protection provided from uh, infection with Omicron for either other subvariants or future variants. All of which means to say that it's possible that we have a late fall surge uh, again from Omicron because of waning immunity. And the strategies available for governments right now are less on getting uh, people who have never been vaccinated vaccinated. The, the data out there suggests very few people anywhere in the world who want to be vaccinated have not been, even in low resource settings as opposed to the available strategies, which might focus more on getting those who are willing to be vaccinated, have been previously vaccinated, 
getting a, uh, a further booster to enhance their protection against severe disease as that also wanes over time. Broader use of antivirals, particularly in low and middle income countries. Uh, and then for those individuals who are at particularly high risk, uh, you know, consideration of social distancing and masking as transmission in your community goes up. Now, as a backdrop to all of those strategies, the thing that we are learning that is, you know, two and a half years into this pandemic is just how important surveillance is, uh, you know, paradoxically, in many ways, the, the, the data stream that we have available today is worse than a year ago because of some of the issues that I started with in this video about uh, home testing, different definitions of incidental versus uh, underlying COVID for both hospitalization and death. So uh, very challenging on the surveillance side, but absolutely critical that we keep monitoring the pandemic and trying to do it in as comparable a fashion as possible and particularly keeping track of new variants. So that's our roundup of what we see in our analysis this week and the release of our new forecasts.